If if no one's there, does a tree make noise that falls in a forest? <laughs> uh, wow. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor Recap listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I am good. Good to be back in the Tois. Yes, we are in Ottawa right now visiting my parents. And I am not wearing jeans for a reason. No. And you are wearing a very cute t-shirt. What's going on with that? Oh, yeah. I bought it at the mall. <laughs> and why don't you tell our Shandys what size that t-shirt is? <laughs> it's kids extra, extra large. <laughs> I really wanted the shirt and it was sold out in grown up sizes. Very anyway. cute. So, Andy, any housekeeping before we get going? There is some housekeeping that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> there was quite a misunderstanding in the last recap. Okay. And he's like a to bone to pick with some shandies. Yes. The air must be cleared. Okay. So, I know that Percy Sledge wrote When a Man Loves a Woman. <laughs> <laughs> what I said was that was. His song, meaning that was Michael Bolton's song that you think of Michael, Michael Bolton when you think of that song being sung by Michael Bolton. I guess the, what they're saying is how would Percy Sledge feel about I, that? I understand that I may have not chosen my words perfectly, but I was singing <laughs> Percy Sledge's version of When a Man Loves a Woman when Michael Bolton was literally like, I don't know, was he waiting tables? What was he doing before? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Like he wasn't even famous. Like <laughs> I know, I know it's Percy Sledge. <laughs> okay. I know, how could, how could they think? How could you think that I, I <laughs> wouldn't know? I'm not 21 years old, I'm a middle-aged man. I know who sang When a Man Loves a Woman and I know that Michael Bolton was not the originator of the song. I am offended. But I forgive you all. It's understandable. It was a misunderstanding. You were really upset about this. I was. You were like, I feel so misunderstood. How could the Shandys think this about me? Well, that me? was what I thought. How could they think it about me? Yeah. How about, could they think I wouldn't know that? Meanwhile, I'm going to admit, I did not know that Percy Sledge wrote Men But that's when okay. Man. But did you think that Michael Bolton wrote Men, When a Man Loves a Woman? I wasn't even sure. I mean, okay. a lot of these artists have someone else writing their songs. Okay. I, when I think it's just like their song... Like, um, I Will Always Love You. I Will Always You, Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. but Guns N' Roses didn't write <laughs> Knocking on Heaven's Door. It was Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan also wrote All Along the Watchtower, which made Jimi Hendrix famous. I can go on forever. Yeah. My point is, is that when I said it's his song, I meant it was his, like his, the song that he was like, yeah, this is my song yeah. for me. Hey. When you hear Michael Bolton singing When a Man Loves a Woman, you're like, oh, that's the Michael Bolton's song. <laughs> You don't say like, oh, that's the song that Michael Bolton wrote, and I, that's the only person who ever wrote that song? I think the gist here is that to call a song someone's song, that's very subjective. I misspoke, and I, <laughs> and I apologize for that, but I just want to make it clear there was a misunderstanding. But, but okay. So you're apologizing for misspeaking, but you expect every Shandy who was yes, like, Andy, I, yes. I'm correcting for you. For my one apology, I expect tens of thousands in return. <laughs> Actually, only about a dozen. I would say around 40 about to 50. 50. Yeah, but, but, a lot the, of people came after you for that but one. But that was 50 people who wrote in. What about the thousands who didn't, who were like, ugh, this idiot. Oh, oh, you were so upset. You know what I've learned about you yeah. in general from being married to you for so long? I've learned that you hate nothing more than being wrongfully accused. Yes, it is my biggest pet peeve. Yeah. Not even a pet It rises above peeve. Mm -hmm. It's like it really affects my soul. You know what mine is? Being condescended to? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bachelor, episode three, season 28. I enjoyed this episode. As did I. Yes. Shall we get going? Yeah. So there's the cold open. We're not going to talk about the contents of the cold open, except to say that there was a drama in it, and we're not counting it because, as far as I'm concerned, cold opens are not part of the content no, of the absolutely. show. absolutely. We've it's, we've established yes. that from long ago. Cold open and preview, no word watch. I'm only putting it out there because I think that it might be a heated word watch this week because there were a lot of dramas. Yeah, and very few correct guesses. Yes. And there were actually a few guesses that would have been right had we yeah. included the first drama. And correct. I know those people are going to be pissed off, but rules are rules. <laughs> So we pick up in the mansion with Autumn. I have to point out, Autumn, in this scene, she's wearing like yoga, a matching yoga set, and mm -hmm. she's talking about how excited she is about Joey or whatever. She looks so much like Claire Crawley in this scene. When I saw her sitting on that sofa in that room, I was like taken right back. Huh. You know, sometimes like you'll smell something or see something and it takes you right back to memory. I saw Claire sitting, I saw Autumn sitting on that sofa wearing that outfit talking about Joey and I, I was brought back to the Bachelor oh, Mansion wow. in that scene. Wow. Yeah. Well, did it feel good? 
it didn't feel bad. It's like a real memory lane moment. Yeah. It's a big uh, transformative moment for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse arrives and tells them they're the 18 women who made it through and therefore who Joey can see a future with. <laughs> you he should move to Utah. What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> Slow burn. Okay, so going on this first group date are Edwina, Kelsey A, Lexi, Allison, Medina, Krissa, Leia, Sydney, and Maria. And they go to a theater with a marquee that reads Mrs. Wright. And Joey explains this by saying Mrs. Wright means the perfect person for him. They just fit together and it feels so right. You know, I've been thinking my whole life, I'm like, what does Mrs. Wright mean? <laughs> and finally, I know. Jury reveals there are ladies who will be joining them. And someone's like, permanently they've seen this oh, show before God. Come on. uh but no it's asking from golden bachelor so april susan kathy and hmm. nancy you're asking we're telling they were smart to brand themselves that way of course because if i were another woman on, like sandra for example yeah. like why wasn't sandra there because she wasn't part of asking i mean they would have to bring sandra back just to fart <laughs> all i'm saying is She's that just farting <laughs> i feel bad for sandra <laughs> no really i do <laughs> <laughs> She's farting. Yeah. Asking? You're asking? I'm farting. <laughs> they reveal this will be a pageant with a live audience. Nah. We've seen things like this before. I I'm, enjoyed this. I mean, Maria is impressive. I, 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 they, sh they showed some stuff there. That was Maria, right? All yeah, that stuff she yeah, was Yeah, she was doing full blow. Flips where your like, head gymnastic. like goes at the bottom and it doesn't hit the ground. Yeah, like was it hands-free? Hand oh, that's a better way of saying that. Yeah, <laughs> hands-free flipping. Hands-free cartwheel? Yeah, yeah, more like that. That, to me, like... Unbelievable. If someone said, like, the whole world is going to vaporize in six months, mm -hmm. the vaporize. Yeah. It's just going to be gone. Humanity will never have existed. And someone said, all you have to do is a hands-free cartwheel. Uh -huh. Wouldn't even come close. Would you attempt it? Yeah, I would go to the number one hands-free cartwheel teacher in the world. I would just pay... I would take all my life savings. they teach me how to do this. No chance. Six months, the whole world vaporized. All right. <laughs> okay. Glad we covered that one. Okay, so there's a Sunday chill loungewear category. I thought this was cute. Uh, the question and answer and then talent. The main person of note here is Lexi because she gives such a gold star answer when she's asked what Joey's most attractive quality is. She says that, yes, he's so handsome and whatever, but it's his heart, his sincerity. He's so genuine. He remembers the little things you tell him. I do think that those are all true. Yeah. But I also think that she got lucky with that question. But she also hallmarked it in. I mean, come on. She's not reinventing the wheel. No, it was a very predictable answer. Yeah. I mean, she would really have to really drop the ball to not answer that correctly. Yeah. And then in the talent, Edwina writes and sings a song a cappella, Which was great. I thought, I mean, this is so ballsy what she did. Yeah. I was really impressed. Acapella. And she was pretty much in tune for the most of it. And Sydney does a rather cringy cheer. I got to be honest. This is what happened there. She thought that was going to be a showstopper. And then when she realized it was embarrassing, she made believe like she was kind of joking about it. Yeah, she says it's funny. When she sits back down, she says, I think we can just end the talent show there. I think she was making fun of herself. She was, but she was making fun of herself having known that what she did was a bomb. Oh. I think she thought she's like, oh, I'm a cheerleader. I'm going to fucking nail this. Oh, so she's like one of those people that tries something. And then when it doesn't land, she's like, oh, I was joking. Yeah. She's the kind of person who covers up for something they thought would have been good, but then wasn't good. Uh -huh. And then they cover up for it as if they knew it wasn't going to be good from the beginning. So Lexi, I mean, Lexi really almost saves Sydney, I think, the embarrassment, because she goes up and she's like, in my 30 years on this earth, I've learned that I, my talent is kissing. Hmm. And then she has Joey come up and she kisses him. The ladies are, uh, you know. I mean, I would have been pissed. Really? It was cheap. It's funny. Lexi is such a mystery to me because in some ways I think she seems really serious. Mm -hmm. But then she'll do these sort of jokey or like off the beaten path things that I'm like, was that your idea? Like, what made you choose that? I, like this seemed out oh, of character. So you think for production her. is trying know, to funny her up? Not, it's trying to give her personality. I don't know. Like the time she did the painting thing, the watercolor yeah. thing. Even that, you know, it was like, oh, it showed us her sense of humor. But even that felt like out of character for her, and this felt out of character yeah. for her. But also, I don't know her, so maybe I'm the one who's formulated an incorrect impression of her. Yeah, maybe the edit has, has confused you yeah, about her personality. She, but I agree, there is kind of a little bit of a dissonance between the the serious Lexi and the 
playful, funny like Yeah, so. yeah. And Joey even says that he could feel her lips quivering. Oh. So she had a lot of nerves doing that. Like, that's a pretty ballsy thing to oh, do. Oh, so in other words, she's not the best kisser in the world. <laughs> Maybe the quiver is the magic sauce. I mean, you think Michael <laughs> Jordan's quivering when he's shooting the final shot for the <laughs> world championship? Okay, so the winner is Lexi, which ruffles a few feathers. In the evening, we hear Edwina say that she felt someone who put actual effort should have won the crown. Mm-hmm. And you agreed, Andy. I 100% agree. Edwina's always on point. I have to agree with that. Everything Edwina says is right. I am a huge Edwina fan after this episode. I liked her last week, but this week I'm like, yes, girl, she's that narrator that you're like, thank you. Thank you for injecting reason into the situation. Lexi has her one-on-one time. Meanwhile, the women are talking about Lexi. And I don't really think this was shit talking. I want to get that out of the way because it kind of turns into Sydney, of course, being so loyal. Sydney loves talking about how loyal she is. Sydney says, I have a lot of confidence. I'm not afraid to be on stage. Yeah, I was bummed, but at the end of the day, Lexi's my girl, which is enough with this. Enough already. I love how Edwina pounced on this. She was like, you say she's your girl. I'm friends with Lexi too. Yeah. And Sydney's like, I just don't want to be talking shit. And Edwina's like, we're not talking shit. Like, I would say this to Lexi's face. They're not talking shit about Lexi as a person. They just feel that she didn't deserve to win, having not really put an effort into a talent the way a lot of people you had. Know, my question, why is Edwina the only voice of reason here? No one wants to speak up because they're scared of Sydney. You know why they're scared of Sydney? Yeah. Because Sydney is a bully. <laughs> You're uh, giving away how you feel, Andy. Oh, We're not there I'm yet. I'm getting very. I'm, I'm a little heated about Sydney, so I may, I may, I may jump. The I gun. mean, this episode with Sydney. Holy crap! Yeah, I thought. Imagine, I thought Jess sucked. I know. <laughs> Jess is peachy keen next to Sydney. Oh, Sydney superhero. is frustrating to watch in a way that I haven't seen in quite some time. Oof. She is one of those people that... You want to scream at the TV. Yes. That's why Edwina standing up to her in that moment, I really appreciated that because the default I actually think would have been like, oh, never mind then. Yeah, we're not talking shit. Didn't mean to... Blah, blah, yeah. You know, S- Sydney is very aggressive in advertising her loyalty to other people and shaming other people. When, frankly, I, this was not shit talking to me. No. There's a very low bar, once again, similar to Maria being like, Medina's not old. It was fully undigested food talking. It wasn't even close to the intestine. <laughs> So Lexi's one-on-one time, this is them talking about how effortless it is they make out. And then Kelsey A, she says she doesn't love a lot of attention, which we enjoyed. I agree too. I don't think she's just saying that. Oh, I believe it too. Yeah, some yeah. people say that, but they do like it, but they say they don't. Yeah. She doesn't like it. I <laughs> he, believe her. He praises her for being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. There's something there that feels so right. She agrees they make out. Montage of time with Edwina and Allison. And finally, Maria. Maria says this was a hard day for her. It wasn't in her comfort zone to do that. And she, I love this. She really, to Joey's face, she's like, you know, it was a little weird, like, We all put a lot of effort in and had this been a kissing contest, then sure you validated the right thing. But and Joey was quick to be like, oh, it wasn't just the talent portion. No, she put him on the spot and he deserved it. Yeah. And I also love, though, that it wasn't confrontational. No, she She was was stating the fact she knows how to talk to someone about a disagreement. Yes. Without being a bully. Thank you. Yeah, I agree completely. I thought that he also handled this really well. Like he yeah. didn't get defensive. And he was in the wrong. I thought giving giving Lexi the win was was not the right move. And and I think Maria's 100% right. This once again this felt a little produced to me. It, it did. It did. It felt like he was he was force fed this and he did it yeah. and maybe he regretted it. Yeah, I also think though that it possibly hurt Lexi at the end of the state. I'm not saying that she would have gotten this group date, Rose, but I think it sort of kicked her out of the running for it because Maria said this. Mm -hmm. And not because I don't think Maria did that on purpose. I just think that it wouldn't have been a good look on him to have given this group date, Rose, to Lexi. I agree. And I think Joey, if there's one thing we're learning about him, he's very considerate. Oh, yeah. And that is a huge compliment. Yes. That's one of my favorite traits in a person. I'll tell you, Joey's a real gentleman. At least he's portraying a real gentleman yes. on the television. Yeah. And now Medina, this is funny. He's like, you alluded to there being some something in the house that was upsetting. Mm. Now's the time to share it if you uh, want. Yeah. And she seems resistant. And he's like, okay, I just want to be a safe space. And she's like, okay. Uh, (laughs) She's like, well, it's about my age and how someone saying that she's not old was not validating to her. 
Honestly, it's, it's so hard ridiculous. to even talk about this without it's laughing. It's laughable. It is. Like, even that They're sentence. They're not validating her belief that she's old when she's 31. <laughs> Good. You should be psyched yes. that they're not validating that. Yes. I That's just, not a feeling that should be validated. This is so kid glovey. Are we She all- is insulting everyone over 31. Well, and I don't even really think it's Medina. I almost feel that Medina This is all to me this is Sydney. Sydney stirred 100%. this pot. No, I'm not blaming Medina. Yeah, yeah. Medina Medina's sort of like a She's a she's a B character. Who, yeah. who's she's a B villain. Yeah, she's not even close. She's, she's like been she's used. like an extra. Like we said last week, she's been used. She's a foil. Yes, for this stupid argument. Yes, but there's nothing less bullish than telling someone, "No, you're wrong. You're not old." <laughs> like I wish when I was a kid, yeah. I would have dreamed of bullying like that. I know, dreamed it's, of it. And there are some semantics here because Medina said that she. F- felt bullied. And then Maria is like, who did you call a bully? She says this later. And Medina's like, I didn't call anyone a bully. I said, I felt bullied. And Maria's a little like, "Mm." like how, how is the assumption then not that the person who you, who made you feel bullied a bully? Right. But also let's not validate everyone's feelings. Not everyone's feelings are validatable. (laughs) You're in a funny mood today. I love it. I'm a little riled up. You know what? It felt good. It felt yeah. good to relish tension that didn't feel completely manipulated. You know what I like about this? Sometimes in this show, there's a villain, and we clearly have a villain now. Yes. I don't care what anybody says. I know. Yeah, we know ironically, who the villain is. she thinks she's the victim. Yeah. But what works, what is good entertainment, and I'll take it, even if it's manufactured, I don't care. What's good is when you have a counterbalance to the villain. So, Sydney is clearly the villain. Yeah. And Maria is clearly the hero here. Uh-huh. And that's what works because you can actually root for a team. In the end, Joey asks if Medina would name the bully and she says she would rather not say. I give her credit yeah. for yeah. showing some restraint here. And now we get Word Watch 1 with Joey saying, I'm not someone who loves drama. And now we are back at the mansion where a one-on-one date card arrives and it's for Jen. Mm. Mm. That's not surprising. Yeah. Back on the date, we have to talk about Word Watch 2 here because it's the same line of Joey's saying, I'm not someone who loves drama. But because it did fall in the episode proper, we yeah. are we are they counting count. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was Word Watch 2. And Joey now gives the group date rose to Kelsey A. Andy, you were stoked. Yeah. I'm into this. <laughs> yeah. You really think it's Kelsey A. No, I don't think she's necessarily winning, but I think she is. She is right up hey, there. I, I don't think you're a unique snowflake. For no, I know. I, I was just saying. <laughs> Folk essentials for dewy, hydrated skin. <laughs> I realize that your jingle sounds a little bit like, dear Shanty. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yes, but it's multi-purpose. Because we do love us some Oak Essentials. This is a new sponsor. And I hope our Shandies know by now that I do not endorse anything skincare related. I mean, we don't endorse anything we don't love, but when it comes to skincare, I am extra stringent. And the Shandies don't know this, but I have turned down numerous skincare lines. Yes. We'll be sent the products, I will try it, and I'm like, no, thank you. Meanwhile, Oak Essentials, and they were founded by the masterminds over at Jenny Kane, and I really do feel this stuff makes a difference. I feel the difference. I actually love this product. It's their moisture rich balm. And, you know, we talk about how Jenny Kane is, I've made it clothes. This is like that for your face. And think about it. If you're Jenny Kane, like you're the people behind Jenny Kane, Mm -hmm. are you just going to put out, you're going to go to some private labeler and be like, hey, get, just get me a cream. Just make it white, make it creamy. Yeah. No, you're going to put some science behind it because you have to make a cream that's at the level of a Jenny Kane sweater. Yes. It was a double ad. (laughs) Double ad. (laughs) So Oak Essentials Moisture Rich Balm is one of those, like I even feel to call it a cream is incorrect. It really is a balm. You take the tiniest amount, a little bit goes a very long way. It's nutrient rich and it stimulates collagen production and I see a difference in the morning when I put this on last at night. I simply do. My skin is way more hydrated in the morning, regardless of what other products I used. I've tested it out with all of my different nighttime regimens, and I've honestly been impressed, which is saying a lot because I try a lot of skincare. And I don't want you to take this the wrong way at all, but I have to be honest, I've noticed a difference in your skin. Really? Yeah. It's incredible. I never do. Usually you you you, you do products and I'm like I don't I don't see any difference. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was being honest. Okay. So 2024 is the year of the natural head-to-toe glow. Our listeners will get 15% off their first order when they use code SHANDY at checkout. That's 15% off your first order when you go to Oak Essentials. That's O-A-K-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S dot com promo code SHANDY. So go ahead and treat yourself. From luxurious skincare to meaningful self-care, you deserve it. So Andy, some habits I think are hard to pick up, habits that you know are good for you. Mm -hmm. But if there's one habit that you and I picked up pretty much overnight, it is AG1, which you're holding right now. And you know, sometimes I forget to do it first thing in the morning and I feel it. Yeah. Like something's wrong. <laughs> and then I realize what I did. And I go <laughs> running to the kitchen and make my AG1. Actually, that's not true. I brush my teeth first, which is saying something. Because I can brush my teeth before drinking this, and it's still good. So AG1 is comprehensive daily nutrition. It is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, and pre and probiotics, among other things, and all packed into one drink. Honestly, for us to pick up something like this, to this extent, where suddenly we tried it, and every day since... We've taken it every morning. We ordered it to Seattle. We've ordered it to be sipped here. We brought it with us to Australia and New Zealand. We don't go anywhere without this stuff. For us to take on something like this and continue to buy it with our own money, we've got to feel a difference. And let me tell you, I do. And I feel a difference if I forget which is very rare, but once in a while, I'm busy in the morning, something happens, I get a call, I yeah. have to deal with it, and I'm like, what's missing? Yeah, I don't feel right, why and do I, I feel... take this, and I'm telling you, it <laughs> makes me feel better. Yeah, why do I feel foggy? Yeah. Why do I feel less focused? Why do I feel kind of groggy? Yeah, why haven't I done the thing that I usually do in the morning? <laughs> what that, thing? The thing. The thing. The unspoken thing. <laughs> I mean, we've said before when we took AG1 on that big trip, Australia, New Zealand, that trip was begging for us to have issues on. And let me tell you something. It's the first big trip we've taken where I didn't have issues. Yes. And there was only one common denominator, and that was AG1. Yeah. I actually missed it. I felt like I wasn't really on vacation because I was so regular. <laughs> AG1 ruined my vacation. <laughs> So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, plus five free travel packs with your first purchase exclusively when you go to drinkag1.com slash dearshandy. That's drinkag1.com slash dearshandy. He closes by mentioning the bully thing to the group. So after Joey leaves, Medina owns this and includes the word bully or bullying here. And... What ensues is an extremely irritating exchange oh, between Maria and mostly Sydney. And I'm not going to go through it line by line, but I think a key takeaway from this exchange is Sydney calling Maria a catty person. Mm -hmm. And Maria says, Why am I a catty person? Yeah. And Sydney says, You are catty, that's all. So, no context, no explanation, no reason, just you're catty, I've decided. It is so. That's problematic. Rid me of Sydney. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Rid Mar me of her. Maria says, You can't just say that. Give me context. And Sydney's response to that is, I'm happy with my character. I stay true to myself. So, so this is the thing you, you, we talk about narcissism a lot. I'm yeah, I'm she, always hesitant to throw that I'm hesitant, that but I'm going to say no, it right now. She's traits. displaying yes. narcissistic traits. Yes, where she cannot not be like at fault. Sydney is always the victim. Yeah, she's projecting everything else. Oh, I did something? You know, you did that. Oh, specifics? No, I'm just going to say you did it, and I'm going to say it in a way where I'm 100% sure I'm right. Yeah. So who could possibly question yeah, it? Yeah, and if anyone does question it, that's when she's like, I'm exiting this conversation, Yeah, yeah this because you're negative so space. toxic and yeah. hostile, and you're bullying me, and I can't possibly. The fact of the matter is, Sydney has been a bully her whole life. And this I don't is, know about that. I like to always keep it in the realm of this show. We don't know what she's like in real life. Maybe this show's I don't care. Up. I'm going to say it. <laughs> Sydney's been a bully her whole life. She knows the skills. She's an artisan. Mm. This is classic reversal. Mm. This is what she does all the time. And then she accuses other people of being a bully. And then some stupid friends of hers come to her aid and they're like, oh, I'm sorry you were bullied. And she's like, nice. <laughs> I've seen this movie. We have a long way to go. Ultimately, Sydney says she's done being attacked. She's done being in this negative environment. She's leaving. My favorite part is she's like, and anyone who wants to join me can. And yeah, no one joins no thanks. her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one joins her. She leaves on her own. Here we get Word Watch 3 with Maria saying Sydney's brought me into drama that can affect my situation with Joey. 
And that brings us to the next day. We see a hidden camera conversation. I always pay extra attention to these when it's not, you know, the U-shaped formation, the, the two girls sitting side by side facing out for a girl chat. Like these girls were like leaning on cushions. Like clearly they were not fully aware that this conversation was being picked up. It's between Edwina and Star. I love the shock on mm. Star's expression at the idea that Maria could be a bully, yes. considered a bully. Yes. And you know what? Once again, all you have to do, if you question, if you're like, oh, you're being too hard on Sydney, or oh, maybe Maria is a bully, mm-hmm. all you have to do is listen to Edwina. Was Edwina is always right. Yeah, they all appreciate how straightforward Maria is. And we even see an interesting clip. I thought this was of note because I think in the old days, we might not have been shown this. We see Medina and Maria sort of in passing in between the living room and the kitchen, hashing it out. Yeah. And they agree they're good. And they almost like, yeah. they, I think they do a fist bump or whatever. Yeah. I think Medina honestly feels a little bad about what she did to Maria. I agree. As a matter of fact, I think she's scared to do a reversal in front of the group because she's scared of Sydney. And why is she scared of Sydney? Because Sydney's a bully. Everyone's scared of Sydney. It no is. one speaks up except Edwina. Edwina has balls. Yeah. <laughs> I like balls. <laughs> It was interesting here how Maria is like, okay, we're good. And Medina's like, okay, but I also want it to be good with Sydney. I'd like it if the three of us sat down. It's like it wasn't enough for her and Maria to just be good. She needs it to also be good with Sydney. It almost felt like she's deferring a little bit to Sydney. Yeah. It's like it can't be fully good until it's also good with Sydney. It almost felt like she felt a pressure to provide the same loyalty to Sydney that Sydney has so performatively shown to her. Yes. And for Medina to fully forgive Maria without Sydney approving, that would be a betrayal to Sydney's trust. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. Sydney has created this, this circle of loyalty where yeah. she's got her girls back and they'd better have hers. Yeah, but she's not a bully. <laughs> Somehow not a bully. She's the victim. Okay, so now Jen's one-on-one date. They chat on the beach. They marvel over their level of comfort together. They toast, and she teaches him the seven years bad sex thing. When they they toast, yeah. and she's like, "No, you have to look me in the eye." Seven years bad sex, and he had never heard of this. Yeah, and but Andy, I also well, didn't. Okay, yeah. so admit it to the show. No, I, I thought it was seven years bad luck. No, it's because bad seven sex. years bad sex makes no sense. Like, why would you still be in that relationship if you're having seven years of bad sex? I mean, you must, unless the, it's a great mental relationship. Yeah, but the whole point is that it's you. You're the one that didn't look someone in the eyes when you toasted, and therefore you are the reason why the sex you're having oh, is Oh, so bad. you you have sex with multiple people in seven years. It's all bad. No yeah. matter who you have sex yeah. with, it's going to be bad sex. Something like that. Oh, I get it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm dumb. <laughs> anyway, I was amazed that Joey didn't know this. Less amazed that you didn't, if mm, I'm honest. Mm. He basically gives her a surfing lesson here. Very cute like chemistry between them. Yeah. There is a kiss captured by the GoPro on the surfboard mm-hmm. that had me swooning. Oh, yeah. Where she was on the board and he was encouraging mm-hmm, her. And mm-hmm. they just have this really natural kiss in the water. They may have forgotten that they were on camera. I think they did. That's why I loved it so yeah. much. Like, I always love those little secret moments yeah. captured. Super cute. It felt very authentic. I like Jen. Me too. That's chill. Jen has the same chill as Joey. If they just bond on chill, she may be going places. Okay. In the evening, she reveals she's been in a few bad relationships in the past and she's worried she'll never be loved. She opens up about her upbringing now. Mm. Her parents' relationship was not good. And in her ITM here, she says she never knew what a loving relationship even looked like. What I appreciated about, like, I feel weird, like, nitpicking like the delivery of someone's quote unquote sob story but I really appreciated how natural this conversation with Joey felt and how the editors filled in the blanks with things she had shared in an ITM meaning I don't think she went in with like her talking points you know it's almost like they had to fill in the blanks with other moments she wasn't just ready to go with her rehearsed Mm -hmm. quote unquote sob story very natural and she says that her dad slept in the basement for six years and i forgot that part yeah that's intense yeah and she felt unwanted by her dad never felt truly loved her relationship with her dad deteriorated to nothing and he is not a part of her life anymore Mm, and with joey she says she can see what a good person he is it's something she's looking for she's ready for that they make out Mm -hmm. i am such a big jan fan and it I feel weird saying that right after the quote unquote soft story. But what I like about her is that she's really positive and bubbly, but 
also very down to earth. She's got like a really good balance of being kind of like a chameleon, a social chameleon, in my opinion. Yes. And she's cool. I like the way she just doesn't do all the overreactions to everything. Yes, you loved that. So they go outside where there's this incredible drone show. Unbelievable. Yeah. And that's like a low budget drone show. Drones are incredible. Wait, you think that's low budget? No, I'm not saying it's low budget. It's uh-huh. not like some, you know, some kid in his basement did that. I'm saying that that's like easy now. Really? Like, have you seen like the Super Bowl drone shows or like those drone oh, yeah. shows in China where they have like the Olympics? It's yeah. insanity. Yeah. I mean, I was impressed by this drone show. Yeah. They really nailed the logo. <laughs> The logo was unbelievable. <laughs> Not one, you'd think one drone, like the wind would blow a little, it would be yeah, off. No. It's perfect. Well, so we loved how when it said Jen, and she's like, oh, it's my name. <laughs> will you accept this rose? I love how she joked, you know, is it going to say, will you marry me? She jokes about this. We loved her reaction watching the drone show yeah. because it felt very relatable to me. You often see a contestant be like, oh my God. And like sort right. of screaming and like laughing and all these things. Jen was just like, yeah, like she almost looked a little embarrassed. It was extremely relatable. Absolutely. Very down to earth. And to be honest, she's my dark horse now. And I have a feeling I know me. I know my faults. Yeah. And I just I just am afraid of change. Like I want to stick with my top four. And uh-huh. I have a feeling I'm going to regret not putting her in my top four. So basically what I'm doing is I'm giving... A pre-package, I told you so, down the road for when Jen goes far that I didn't put her in my top four because that's the way I am from a personality okay. perspective. But you're basically being Sydney by pretending oh, that what you were doing yes. was a joke. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Thank you, oh, God. my wife. We spend too much time together. Okay, very cute moment when the Bachelor logo shows up and Joey's like, that's me. That was cute. (laughs) Lots of tasteful making out here. And now it's the next day. Group date number two on this date are Caitlin, Autumn, Rachel, Daisy, Evelyn, Kelsey T, Star, and Jess. The date card reads, I'm done playing singles. And they meet Joey on a tennis court where they are joined by tennis superstars, James Blake and Pam Shriver. Yeah. I confess I did not know who either of these people were. Well, but well I, Pam Shriver is like a legend in women's tennis. Okay. But James Blake was, I like when I was watching tennis, I used to watch more tennis back in the day, but uh-huh. I remember he was- You don't have to hold back for me. I love watching tennis. Yeah, you, we should watch more tennis. Yeah. I really enjoy tennis. Yeah. I like one-on-one sports, all of them. But James Blake was a big deal. He was like one of those stars that just almost made it to the stratosphere and then fell off. Okay. Yeah, he did really well a couple of years, then he kind of never quite fulfilled what everyone wanted. I mean, he made it on The Bachelor. And that's all you need. What more do you need? Very cute that Joey was the one fangirling over them. Yeah. And they have a a big tennis lesson now. And then Jesse arrives to say there will be a tennis tournament. This was definitely a sort of variation on the pickleball tournament Mm -hmm. from Golden Bachelor. Yeah. Except they went even further by giving them funny costumes. I thought this was cute. Yeah, it's it was different. Lots of puns ensue, as you mm-hmm. can imagine. And in the finals are hot dog and bun versus lobster and butter. And then lobster and butter, aka Evelyn and Kelsey T win. I don't know if they seem to win anything. No, they just won glory. In the evening now, Caitlin has one-on-one time. She tells Joey about this family curse where all the women in her family are single. Yeah. And Joey says that she's surrounded by strong, independent women. I thought this was a really cute reply. Like he asks questions and then she reveals that, you know, her mom doesn't want to give up her independence. That was a perfect reply. Yeah. He's like, well, you're surrounded by strong, independent women. Yeah, he he turns a perceived weakness into a strength. He's very good at that. Yeah. I mean, he's growing on me. He should should have been a doctor. Oh, really? Imagine his bedside manner. (laughs) He's like, you're dying. But you know what? There's a flip side to this. And now Rachel, she goes in for a hug and then her earring gets caught. This was cute. Yeah. Very relatable. Oh, yeah. A producer has to come and untangle them. And Andy, randomly here of all places, you said, Joey's got a better crop of women than usual. I would be struggling. Yeah. You you really like the women this season. There's, there's a good, solid handful of women that I would... I, it's the first time. You know when they're always like, like, oh, God, this is such a horrible place to be. Like, how can I decide between all these women? Most seasons, I'm like, yeah, I could decide. <laughs> no offense, but no, th- I know what you mean. This season, I there's like, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, like I, I've got a lot of, I've got at least five that I'd be like, I could see a future with. <laughs> Are you gonna move to Utah? <laughs> uh-huh. Rachel tells Joey that he reminds her of her dad, how he values women. Her dad has a gentleness to him that she sees in Joey. She tears up here. They make out. I really like Rachel. 
And I was a little bummed she didn't end up getting this group date. Yeah, Rose, we actually. both thought she would get it, but in thinking she would get it, she doesn't get it because that's the way the show works. You think she thought she was going to get it? I think everyone thought she was going to get it, so they don't want to give it to her. They want to give it to someone that not everyone thinks is going to get it. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because even last week on that group date, she won the dance, but then she didn't end up getting that group date, Rose. Right. I feel like I've had my eye on Rachel. There's two people I've had my eye on is Rachel and Kelsey T. They could be dark horses. Like I can see them suddenly pulling ahead sure. and ending up in the final four, but there's just not enough data to go off now. And the fact that he didn't give her this group well, date rose after that dance last week and after this particular conversation about her father, it stood out to me. I agree. And the question becomes, is that a mechanism? Is it like, oh, it's too obvious that it's Rachel, so mm-hmm. let's take away some of these tells. It's too early for it's that, It's too early though. for that. Yeah. So I agree with you. And Joey is in charge of who he gives his roses to. You know, I agree. I, this is the first power move by Joey. Not giving it to Rachel was basically saying Rachel's not making it far. And I agree with you. Okay. I felt that too. Yeah. I thought it was almost it was almost heavy-handed. Like I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a heavy move. Yeah. I just felt after this particular conversation where she tears up, yeah. her earring gets caught on him. Oh. Everything about this one-on-one time screamed you are going places totally agree and she doesn't get that rose yeah. kelsey t now not much to speak of with this one-on-one time but kelsey t is my best dress of the week with this dress Man, you were gushing over that i loved this dress so it was nude with i think a, a black velvet floral print on it it had a sort of like chi pao asian vibe to it with the high neck the long sleeves it was a mini this was fabulous are you getting that dress I will be doing research on it. And if I find out where it's from, I will be linking it below, but no promises. I can't guarantee anything. But I loved this dress. I would buy it in a heartbeat and I would style it exactly how she styled it. And just to to uh, validate what Charlene's saying, I have not seen her gush over a dress like this in quite some time on the show. Mm. <laughs> You think, they don't, you think they need you to tell them that? Well, I just want to be part of this, 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 <laughs> this segment. I'm sorry it's, for excluding it's you. All I have to add is how vociferously you endorse the outfits. I rewound to look at this outfit again. It was by far my favorite look of the season so far. Yeah. Oh my God, maybe I should do a thing where it's like at the end of the season, it's like my favorite look of the entire season. Of course you should do that. Okay. Everyone's been asking you to do that. Well, Kelsey T's look here was so far as the one to beat. All right. All right. Now we have time with Daisy. There is some very funny Frank inviting here. Oh, we laughed over this where she's facing away from the camera and we hear her say, Like if you have any questions or anything about my cochlear implant. Hey, Charlene, what do you think about my new socks? <laughs> Yeah. Very cute moment where she asks him if he wants to touch it. And she says it's a part of her, but it makes her different. And he says, no, it makes you special. Nice. Oh, save. Joey. So yeah. cute. And in her ITM, Daisy says, Joey makes her feel like everything about her matters. Mm-hmm. I loved this. Yeah. He makes her feel like everything about her matters. You want to do Let that point? one sink in for a second. Yeah. He's good. That is what you should be basing what you're looking for in another person yes. on. Opposed to just being like, She's I really, I, I, yeah. Or like, I just really, I like you so much. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we like each other. Every yeah. time we're together, I'm just like, yeah, we really like each other. Yeah, this yeah. is great. Well, and, and I like hot. everything about and you. A, you're missing the hot part. There's usually and you're more, super hot yes. and yeah, everything's great. Because you, you know, have to be listening and you have to take inventory of the things that yes, matter. Yeah. And then you remember those things yeah. later on. Otherwise, you're speaking in generalities. Yes. You're beautiful. You have yeah. a big heart. Yes. You care about family. Oh, uh, yeah. Football and, and fr- family. pizza. Frozen, Frozen pizza. pizza. <laughs> okay. okay. So Joey gives this group date rose to Caitlin. I was shocked. I just thought Lauren was going to get it, mm-hmm. but I'm not complaining because Caitlin is my wild card. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she is your wild card. Yes. I'm very proud of myself. Very nice. <laughs> All right. This is where our word watch starts picking up, Andy. Mm. Back at the mansion, we see Sydney and Leia on a sofa. Leia is saying she doesn't want anyone to go home. Except, well, maybe. And we see a shot of Maria. I guess Leia is friends with Sydney. You know what I bet a lot of it is? Is like who's in whose room? Mm. I bet you anything, Sydney's in a room with a bunch of girls who are like team Sydney. It, you know what? It sucks to be in Sydney's room because then you I, have to like Sydney. It's almost like a built in loyalty. They're all yeah. those after hours where you're not mic'd, the cameras aren't there anymore. They're all whispering in bed yeah. together. Do you think anyone wants to go to sleep that night with Sydney five feet away from them being like, <laughs> oh, what'd you say about me today? <laughs> 
So Leia says this, you know, she's, she suggests that she would like to see Maria go home. And then Sydney like laughs evilly at this. Yeah. I have to point out, how is this not meaner than anything Maria has done? Because at least Maria, you could argue, like if even if you were to construe her being like, that's not old, 31 isn't old, as being mean spirited or whatever at least what you can say is that she did not mean it her intent wasn't to be mean yeah. meanwhile here like they're jo they're joking about how they wish maria would go home and cindy's yeah. like because <laughs> it's a, if, if, if no one's there does a tree make noise that falls in a forest <laughs> uh, wow but you get the point yeah like they're like well but since no one's listening to us mm -hmm. we can be bullies and mean girls doesn't yes. matter it's only when people are listening it's only when the cameras are all on the group mm -hmm. and everyone's chatting yeah well this was hidden camera footage mm -hmm. so here we get word watch four and five sydney says in her itm unfortunately i am associated with this drama but like i am not for drama <laughs> Which, I mean, I already have an issue with that. We have a long way to go. But yeah. I suspect that Sydney is involved in drama a lot of the time in her real life. I think constantly. It's just a suspicion. I think when Sydney's not involved in drama, people are whispering. They're like, why well, is Sydney not involved in any drama? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? What's going that? on? She's yeah. tired. Yeah, she's talking about like, normal she stuff. She didn't sleep well last night. Yeah. <laughs> Sydney insists she's not the mean girl. That's Maria. She has to warn Joey. Says every mean girl. And every mean girl says, I'm not the mean girl. She's the mean girl. That's true. You don't hear Maria saying mean girl at all. No. But she doesn't know what a mean girl, she's not, she doesn't have association with the mean girl no, concept. She, yeah, she's, there's no meanness in her opinion. No, she's straightforward. Yes. You know what? There's, there's not, you know what? There's, I'm going to put a layer on Sydney okay. above and beyond all the things okay. that I find. Unappetizing. The worst type of, if you want to call them bullies or mean girls or whatever, the worst type of people like this are the ones who accuse someone who's just straightforward and yes. just speaks truth of being an a-hole. Yes. Like they can't even, she doesn't even have the, the understanding of what a real person is. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying a real person who's super obnoxious and ruins every party and is yeah. annoying to be around. Like some people can be a little too real. Yeah. But all Maria is, is just honest. Yes. She says what she feels, says what she thinks. And Sydney's like, that's not the way you do it. You hide everything. You mask everything. You manipul manipulate your words mm -hmm. so that they come out in your favor and you don't ever get yes. on people's bad side by saying the thing you actually no, feel. No, it's all in code. It sounds exhausting. It is very Regina George, I have to say. Except Except she doesn't have Regina George's charisma. <laughs> wow, that's a real burn. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's the next day. Kelsey T says the vibes are good that day. They're in high spirits. So we can all see where this is going. Jesse arrives. I mean, we have seen this a million times. Joey is canceling the cocktail party and everyone's like, oh. <gasps> Because yeah. it's a pool party. He uh, just can't wait to see you. It turns out this pool party is sponsored by KFC. Very subtly, might I add. Oh, yeah. I didn't really, was it? I didn't <laughs> notice that. I thought they were just enjoying some KFC. It was a pretty heavy handed sponsorship. I've got to say, it made me wonder how much KFC paid for this. A lot. And I'll tell you something, it must have been an enormous amount. Millions. Because this had to be millions. Because right? ABC and the Bachelor, honestly, is KFC really the thing that you need to be highlighting in your advertising campaign for the season? Is that the thing of all the things that they could be advertising? Is that really is that a real like winner for your your brand? Yeah. I don't, I don't know I don't if know I feel if, great about that. I don't know if they are that discerning. I think they probably got a very high price. Right. I think it was an extremely high price. Yes. And they got and KFC was like, we're going to have this. We're going to have the floaties. We're going to have Jesse doing the thing at the end. Yeah. We're at, there are at least seven people eating. You're going to show them eating. You're going to show them saying it's delicious. Like yeah. they got all the points across. 100%. And they hit the copy. Yeah. But I just don't know if this was necessary. Like why not? Maybe, maybe. Maybe take like $100,000 less and do something that's maybe a little better for America. For me, what I was more focused on is how all those women who helped with this ad, so a lot of them were in their ITMs with the KFC talking about how much they yeah. loved it. I don't think any of them got a cut of this and yeah. they kind of deserved it. Squarespace, where a beautiful website is made. <laughs> It's kind of morphing into something else at this point. Mm. But that was our Squarespace jingle. We called it our favorite jingle of 2023. It's gone a little downhill. We lost our way a little bit. But one thing that hasn't gone downhill is Squarespace. You like my segue there? That was very nice. And it's a new year, but some things do not need to change. No, if it ain't broke, 
you don't fix it. And Squarespace, I think the only way you could apply a new year and like New Year's resolutions to Squarespace is to finally build the website you've maybe been thinking of building. This is your moment. This is the sign you were looking for. Because with Squarespace, it really could not be easier. If you want it to be easier than Squarespace makes it to make a website, then at that point, you just don't want to do any work. Yeah, you just want it fed to you on a silver platter. Yes, but with Squarespace, with really the smallest learning curve I've ever encountered with any kind of web builder, you can get a gorgeous website. You get to pick from a fantastic selection of templates, and you can even narrow down that selection based on what your website is. So whether you are making a blog, or let's say you have a restaurant, you need a website for that restaurant, you you can narrow that down. And they're like, these are probably the templates that you'll want to use. You don't have to, but it will make it easier for you. And from there, the features are through the roof. You can do so much with your Squarespace website, whether you want a member area, maybe you want to do mailing lists, maybe you want a blog, maybe you want to have a gallery to show your wares or show your work. You can do appointment scheduling online. You can have e-commerce. You can even have flexible payment plans. It's unbelievable. There's nothing you could possibly want that's Squarespace does not provide. And the proof is in the pudding. We're sticklers about this stuff and we have many websites with this Squarespace. Yeah, I mean, dearshandy.com, if you don't believe us, go. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shandy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shandy and enter promo code shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So pretty much all the one-on-one time here is a montage leading up to Sydney talking about about Maria. She has a lot of people in her camp, I've got to say. And the more I think about it, the more I think you're right, Andy, that she has surrounded herself with an entourage of people. Who, yes, women. Yes, women who are fearful. They'd rather be with her than against her. Yes. Well, you don't want Sydney as an enemy. No. She could be the reason you go home. Here we get Word Watch 6 and 7. This is Sydney talking about Maria, both of them. Notice who's the one doing all the talking about this. Mm, interesting. Sydney now has her one on one time. She claims after Medina mentioned the bullying thing that Maria instantly started attacking her. Attacking. <laughs> yeah. And she claims that Maria called her embarrassing, weird, and dumb. I have to point out, Maria did not say these things about Sydney. She said them about the situation. Yes. And there's a difference. And that's the classic manipulation that Sydney talks about of words. Mm-hmm. I've had this happen with me, and it's always it's very people frustrating. with tendencies of narcissism mm-hmm. where you've said things, but they twist your words to make them attacks on you yes. when they were generalizations about something. You may have said a word about something even unrelated to the thing that's happening. Yeah. And they'll pull that out and be like, you said that yeah, word. Yeah, it came out of your mouth. Yeah. And then there's nothing you can do because the more, what, what narcissists, sorry, what people with these tendencies do uh-huh. is they know that once they get you in that quicksand, that word quicksand, mm-hmm. that accusation quicksand, you're going to start struggling. Yes. And that's the best thing to do to sink in quicksand. And what's interesting about that is how Medina had said she felt bullied and Maria's like, you called me a bully. And then it was like, whoa, 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 I didn't call you a bully. I said I felt bullied. To me, Maria has far more of a right to be concerned about being called a bully based on that context than Sydney does for accusing Maria of calling her embarrassing, weird, or dumb. A hundred percent. Well, Joey is distraught in his ITM. He says he has no reason not to believe her. Here we get Word Watch 8. Rachel says tensions are high with the drama. So Joey pulls Maria aside now. He says that he heard the terms verbally abusive and hostile environment. Maria's reaction really says it all here. Mm. She is in tears just hearing this. I really felt for her. Yeah. This is something that has gotten away from her. And it's one of those situations, you know, so often we watch these shows on our sofas and we're like, oh, they're doing that wrong. Like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. I would have done this. Yes. When I see this with Maria, I'm like, I have no idea what I would have done differently. She's in an impossible situation. She says that she has been bullied herself. This is not it. Mm -hmm. And from her experience, she'd never want to treat anyone as she's been treated in the past. And you can really believe that this is true. Yes. I believe everything Maria says. And not in, I don't want it to sound like we're just automatically biased towards no. Maria. I just think that she's done absolutely nothing wrong and it's very frustrating I'm basing to watch. it on facts. It broke my heart here when she said she's not being received as well as she thought she would be there. To me, oof, this hit. Yeah. You know, I do think there are slight cultural differences between Canada and the States. Yeah. And when I was in that situation, I was the only Canadian. 
I was, I, I it's not that I went in being like, oh, I'm going to be so well received, but I was just like, wow, I'm different. Yeah. Like I had that moment and I see that happening with Maria here, but in a totally different way. I actually think she's behaving in that house totally different than I would, but not like in a way that I respect, like I'm like power to her. But I just do think there are slight cultural differences. If you get someone from like, where's Sydney from? I don't know. Probably Florida. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know where she's from, but I just think that you take someone from a certain corner of the States and someone from Canada, you really can get a cultural difference here. And I think where Sydney is from, she is not used to ladies being as direct yeah, as Maria I agree. is. I 100% agree. Yes. I don't know if I would look at Maria and be like, she's obviously Canadian. No. But I, I just think there are subtleties here. Yes. And I don't think it's not cultural. I agree. It's not. Canadians are not just different in that they're nice and the dollar is cheap. There's a lot more to it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Maria in her ITM says, I don't know what went on in her life for her to make me feel less than. Isn't that interesting? It's a good way of putting it. It's so funny how Sydney's like, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. She's the mean girl. Who's the one crying uh, in mm -hmm. their ITM about feeling so shitty yeah you've never seen sydney come close to tears no, on anything she thrives she's into it her eyes are bright yeah and perky. i we've never seen sydney come to life more than over this yeah i mean she takes bullying really well <laughs> yeah she does She's so strong. Yeah, getting bullied really lights a fire under her ass. Yeah. Okay, so Maria tells Joey if he likes Sydney, there's no way he could like her. Sydney is throwing out these accusations. There's no context. I love, 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 love what Joey says here. He says, I should have asked more questions. Yes. And I also love what Maria said, mm. which is that you can't have both of us. If you like Sydney, you can't like me. Yeah. Some people can take that as like, oh, that's mean. But no, no, I think that was the perfect thing to say. It was a risk. Yeah. She was rolling the dice, but it was so honest. It was like, if in some universe mm. you have a real connection with Sydney, throw me off. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And She's I, just I like, like we're that. super different. There was nothing backhanded about this. No. In my opinion. It's math. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if two plus two equals six, I don't belong here. Joey in his ITM says, if I'm being honest, how Maria was talking to me felt more real than how Sydney was talking to me. I fell a little in love with Joey here. Yeah. He's I, I, He was good. And also, just not to beat a dead horse, but I think Maria in this situation is such a difficult situation. You have so much anger, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't you feel angry if Joey sat you down and was like, well, this is, you know, this is what Sydney's been telling me. Yeah. Would it immediately, like anger would drive your response. But Maria was able to compose herself and deliver what I thought was way better than I could imagine myself ever doing anything yeah. in, in that situation ever. She handled this very well. Very well. Well, still, I think, speaking her truth you know what i mean and she was still able to get her point across and i really appreciate how joey was able to say i should have asked more questions yeah. you know it takes some maturity to be like oh i did something wrong actually you're right there wasn't context she did not give examples i was really impressed here yeah me too uh so jesse does the usual Pool party cancellation. Ah, oh, the usual. I think people, people were relieved. No, because a lot of them didn't get time, which oh, they use yeah. as a tool. Yeah. So now the women are upset. Joey has to collect his thoughts before the rose ceremony. Of course, many women are upset. They might have already been on the chopping block. They didn't get to talk to him. And now they're forced to have a girl chat outside in that exact spot where we always see this exact conversation mm. <laughs> where producers are like, so girls... Well, how do you think today went? And here we get Sydney saying that she was attacked. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even read that without laughing. What world do we live in where that's an attack? I, I don't know like how happened? Sydney was attacked here. How can that even be in any way interpreted as an attack? It says it all that she says, I'm sorry people didn't get time, but I really needed to squash this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry you all didn't get time, but I needed to do this. She's yeah. acting like she did it for everyone and she was doing something for the greater good. No, girl, this is about you and vengeance. It's all about her. Of note, there's a moment where Autumn's like, well, I really think that with the drama, we should blah, 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 like, you know, focus on what matters. And Sydney steamrolls her there. 
and is like, I know I'm trying to squash it, blah, blah, blah. Like I was, blah, blah, blah. she totally steamrolls her to the point where you see Autumn completely backstep. Oh, yeah. She She's shuts scared. down. She's scared. She's scared. I would be too. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't want to be her next target. The thing is, like, sometimes I think we have controversial opinions. I feel like this is so everybody's opinion that yeah. I don't even know if we have to beat this point. <laughs> Like, does anyone disagree with us? Does any, is anyone in Sydney's camp? To the point where we have to address the raisin thing. Oh, because oh, I, okay. we feel bad for maligning I, people who like raisins I, in cookies and pastries. Yeah, and, it, it was really me. You don't have to join in this apology. Well, it was no, me. it's not that I don't feel bad about maligning them in general. I yeah, feel yeah, bad no, about it's a bad saying choice for pastry, but it does not equate to being in Sydney's camp. Exactly. That I, was where we yeah. went too far. Yeah, I went too far. I apologize to all those raisin lovers. I don't know if you're making the best choice with your pastries, yeah, yeah. but I respect that's it. you know that's subjective. However, to associate people who like raisins with Possibly being Team Sydney, what were we thinking? Terrible. And by the way, I love chocolate covered raisins. One oh. of my favorite snacks. Glossettes. Oh, amazing. Oh, is that? Is that's, that Canadian? that's Canadian. Raisinets is US, okay. well, but they're both great. Glossettes. Glossettes are better, was they use better chocolate. Yes. Anyway, that's a secret, by the way. Canadians use better chocolate in their chocolate bars. It's, <laughs> it's better. It is better. It's way better. This is a really Canadian episode today. Yeah, well, we're in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Canada. <laughs> I was really excited to hear the next line, Andy. <laughs> but back to the raisin thing. More importantly, I would say being in Sydney's camp is tantamount to ketchup on stick. Oh. Yeah. Ketchup on hot dogs? A lot of people put ketchup on hot dogs. Really? Yeah. Over the age of like 10? Yeah. Really? Is that a thing? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. What do you put on a hot dog? I don't eat hot dogs, but if I did, <laughs> it would be spicy mustard like a human being. Okay. The highlight for me of this poolside chat is Maria saying that when she spoke with Joey, he was really confused. And so is she. And Sydney jumps in to say, this is where we have manipulation, guys. Oh, this oh. and this is the coup de grace. Yes. This is it. The cherry on top. What about that was manipulation? Basically, if anyone defends themselves or shares their side of the story, then apparently they're manipulating. This is classic. It's just whatever I do, I say you do. Yes. What is Sydney doing from beginning to end? This is all a grand manipulation. Yes. So what does she accuse Maria of? Of course, manipulation. Yes. Here we have Word Watch 9 with Edwina saying, I don't know why these girls are wasting their time with drama. And then heading into the rose ceremony, Word Watch 10 and 11, Leia saying there's been a lot of drama and Allison saying all the drama between Maria and Sydney. And now we have a rose ceremony during which we get Word Watch 12 with Sydney saying, let's get the drama out of here. And finally, going home at this rose ceremony, no surprises here, although I was sad to see Evelyn go home. Yeah. Evelyn, star and Krissa go home. And now we get Word Watch 13, Maria saying, I'm ready to move forward and leave the drama behind. What a stark contrast to Sydney's ITM here where she says next week she's going to put her energy where it matters. And you think that that means it's going to be oh, we know somewhere where, good. We know what that's going to mean. She says she's not going to let the mean girl win. She's the only one who's not afraid of her. She's It's amazing. She's like put the armor on. She thinks she's defending everyone. No one else is fighting this battle. The irony here, the, this is the true irony. She's saying she's the hero in this. The true irony of her statement is, is that not only is she not a hero, but she is the best villain I've seen in a while. <laughs> She's a delicious villain. Yeah. She's very dislikable. You want her to fail with passion. Mm -hmm. And you want the person that she wants to fail to win with passion. It's funny how, you know, with the with the Medina thing, she was like, oh, well, I'm loyal. It's all about her loyalty. She's such a good friend. It's all about her here too. All about she, Sydney. She's like, I'm the only one who's not afraid of her. What is it like to live in that world? It's the Sydney show. And if you don't buy into the Sydney show, get out. Well, yeah, you're the enemy. You're either with me or you're against she's me. She's one of those. Yes. She's also one of those people where I think if you don't side with her in, let's say, like a friend triangle, do you know what I'm saying? Like, let's say the two friends are fighting the and then there's a third friend yeah. and the third friend just wants to be Switzerland. She would have an issue with that yeah. friend. It's as either well. you are loyal till the end uh -huh. or you are my enemy. Yes. Okay. So now we get a preview where they go to Malta. There is one drama here, but it doesn't count because it's a preview. And now we get credits of Jesse showing his acting chops. Oh yeah. Jesse's getting better. He, he nailed this one. 
KFC was like, yeah. I mean, Jesse's always good. Oh, you mean compared to his Bigfoot one? The Bigfoot was a little weak, but he's he's gotten better. And I'm telling you, this was KFC management was watching this and they were like, we got it. I mean, this was as well done as I can imagine, but I was a little distracted thinking about how much he got paid for this. Uh, I mean. You thought it was built into his contract. It's probably built in or he gets paid. Honestly, either way, he earned it. I'll give it to him. Oh, he 100% earned yeah. this. Yeah. And it was like they saved the absurdity of saying it's the final rose yeah. for a moment where they could cash in. Yes. <laughs> Everyone made money. And don't make fun of that unless you can make money making fun of it. Yes. Okay, Andy, that brings us to your A game. Who is your winner? Easy. Maria. She handled extreme bachelor adversity mm-hmm. with a plum. Okay. You say a plum? I say a plum. A plum? A plum. Oh, I always thought it was pronounced like a plum. Oh, I thought it was a plum. It's spelled like a plum. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Maria, Maria. Yeah. But she was just. Maria. She Sorry. handled <laughs> adversity with a plum. Okay. <laughs> I was so impressed because the first thing you'd feel is anger and helplessness. Mm-hmm. Like and retaliation. Like, that's what I'm saying. Anger breeds retaliation. Mm-hmm. You want to go after it. You want to just be like, no, no, you're wrong. You suck. That's what Sydney does. Sydney yes. retaliates. You challenge me, I am going to try to get you kicked off the show. Maria's not trying to no, do that to Sydney. No, she just helps. She's like, why are you doing this yes. to me? Like, I don't understand. I don't know how to respond to this, but I'm so, this is so foreign to I me. I think that is key. Who is vengeful? Who is yeah. trying to get the other person kicked off this once in a lifetime experience as a way of getting vengeance. And Maria's the mean girl? No, it, it's it's so clear. And when she sat down with Joey, she couldn't have handled that situation any better. And for that, she gets a game. Okay. And now our word watch, Andy, there were 13 dramas. And how many correct guesses? Four. Ooh, this is exciting. Our winner of $230 in One Skin products. I have been using it for the last week. I'm enjoying it immensely. And this is fancy stuff. This is a good prize. Our winner is Katie Kislauskas. Congratulations. You are the winner of some One Skin products. Please email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. Andy, what is the word for next week? The word for next week is manipulative. Ooh. Okay. It's just manipulative. Not manipulation. Okay. Manipulative. Not manipulate. No. Just manipulative. There's always just one word. Okay. It's manipulative. Okay. So if you would like to join in the Shandy Word Watch Fund and have a chance to win a very exciting prize, we have a new prize this week, you can guess the number of times you predict the word manipulation, manipulative <laughs> will be uttered. And we're going to do this with both episodes, episodes four and five. Yeah, there's two episodes. It's going to be one word watch for the whole thing. Okay. So episodes four and five combined, manipulative. And if you guess correct, Correctly, you will be entered in a draw and one name will be plucked and that person will win $200 to spend at Cozy Earth. You guys know they're one of our all-time favorite sponsors. Andy is always wearing their lounge pants. Our bed is covered in their delicious sheets. Our pillows are covered in their delicious... The water on our bodies is wiped off with their delicious (laughs) towels. We sometimes swaddle ourselves in their delicious cuddle blanket. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. Delicious stuff. is a good word. Yeah. I want to eat Cozy Earth. Me too. And you it. too can eat Cozy Earth if you guess correctly and maybe win. <laughs> yeah. You know what Cozy Earth isn't good with? What? Raisins. <laughs> okay. We're going to let the raisins go. Okay. People are very upset about the raisins. Yeah, My sister sorry. texted me. Oh. She and her boyfriend were offended. They're like, we love raisins. Oh, oh man. You know, I'm sorry. I feel terrible about that. I don't really feel that bad. Yeah, neither do I. Oh, so yes. Put in your guesses by this Friday at midnight. I okay. just want to emphasize this is both episodes combined. Yes. Oh, and before we move on from Word Watch, we have a new rule that we were told by other people that we needed to do. We're really bad at promoting ourselves yeah. and implementing these rules. But in order to win Word Watch... From this moment moving forward, you must be subscribed to this channel on YouTube, Dear Shandy, and you must be following us on Instagram at Dear Shandy. I don't think that's asking too much. You know, any giveaway online does this. And so, yes, that's the new rule moving forward. We've never done this in the years we've been giving away free stuff. It starts now. And if anyone has a degree in marketing, (laughs) uh, we would welcome your input. All right, Andy, that brings us to our predictions. Who is in your top spot? I'm going to resist the temptation of Kelsey. Okay. And I'm going to stick with Daisy. Okay. I have Kelsey A still in my top spot. That has mm-hmm. not changed. I respect Who that. do you have in your second spot? Kelsey. 
Okay. I have put Jen in that spot. Mm, yes. I don't disagree with I that. I bought that chemistry. Yeah. I was into it. I really like her. Who do you have in your third spot? I'm sticking with Lexi. Okay. Lexi has not moved from my third spot. And who do you have in fourth? I got to stick with Maria. It's actually the same exact four I had last yeah, week. Yeah, it is. But she was fighting for her life and I thought she fought bravely and I, and I just got to give it to her. Although I was thinking Jen a little bit. Okay. I'm sticking with Maria. Okay. I have Daisy in my fourth spot. I don't really know why I have it in fourth. I just, I really am banking on Lexi pulling ahead. Mm. I think that she's going to have a one-on-one that sort of blows other people out of the water. And I just thought Jen really, wow, what a date. Yeah, it's a good date. Mm-hmm. But I still, agree. Kelsey A. Kelsey A, why is she not getting a lot of screen time? Mm-hmm. Every time he sees her, he's like, oh, this is like, I mean, this is amazing. He really praises her a lot. Like yeah. there's a lot of encouragement. He, the fact that she got that group date, Rose. And he seems a little like almost shy around here. I agree. Like it's very hard to to ruffle his feathers. Mm-hmm. But around Kelsey A, he's kind of like. <laughs> 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 he's like a little schoolboy with yeah. her. All right, that is a wrap, Andy, for this recap. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify, podcast ratings and reviews, tell your friends, and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye bye. Dear Shandy. Um, is there anything you want to bring up in housekeeping other than the fact? Yeah, I'm going to bring up the fact that fucking I know who sings when a man loves a woman. Okay. <laughs>